Hey everyone, how are we doing today? <clears throat> so uh, my name is John, I'm the founder of Leashless Brewing. We're a certified organic brewery here in Ventura, California. And uh, we'll be doing Thirsty Thursday with me today. So I wanna give a shout out to Visit Ventura. And I wanna just fix one glitch. Boom. All right. I do want to give a shout out to Visit Ventura uh, to thank them for all the work they've been doing, especially during COVID, just trying to keep Ventura in the spotlight of other people and for inviting me to do this Thursday, Thursday. <clears throat> We're going to wait a little bit just to make sure we get more people on. It's been bloody hot, so hopefully everyone's staying nice and cool. Got a little water, which if you don't uh, maybe get some water, it's always good to have some water in between the beers. And today we're going to talk about beer, organic beer, some gluten reduced beers. And uh, just a heads up, I'm going to be juggling between two different uh, platforms here. So if you see my head go up or down, or I'm not exactly focusing at you. I'm just juggling between the two different uh, uh, pieces of electronics that we're using to, to stream on multiple platforms. But um, All right, I'm being told to turn my phone. I was told not to do this, but you know what? That's um, all right. So, is it, Visit Ventura is this fine? Kind of. Mike told me to have it. Um, what the bloody. All right, we're having some technical difficulties. I think I know. Hey, Reno, good to see you, Steve. <clears throat> okay, everyone, we're gonna um, go ahead and, and shoot from the hip and, and start off. So just uh, wanna start first by saying, what is a certified organic brewery? And no, all beer is not organic. Um, the term organic is agriculture-based, defined by the National Organic Program, and it's essentially agricultural products that are cultivated without the use of inorganic fertilizers, pesticides, or GMOs. Or like myself and, and Leashless, we process this stuff into a new product. So we take certified organic grains, hops, yeast, and we turn that into certified organic beer. Um, it doesn't stop there. Obviously, there's a lot of cleaning agents that we cannot use because their manufacturing is either carcinogenic in the manufacturing or the way that the chemicals are applied and break down, it's carcinogenic. So it's not only using uh, products that are cultivated with practices that help to uh, improve the soil by not using GMOs or inorganic fertilizers or pesticides, but it's also in, in the cleaning and sanitizing agents and practices that we use. Um, and I'll deviate and go back and forth on this stuff as we drink beer because that's what happens when you drink beer. So first, I don't always cheers with water, but it is in the middle of a heat wave. It, it's hot. So cheers. So we have four beers to drink today. Um, I'm not going to judge you if you drink them all at once or not, but I still have to work. So if you see me not finish a beer, rest assured it will be finished by the end of my day. But uh, in the interest of time, I may not finish all four pints. So we do have four pints. I'm going to bring them out of my lunch box here. Because lunch, it's what we do. Our first beer will be Cheer 5. This is a gluten-reduced um, Belgian Pilsner. Our next beer that we'll delve into will be Nose Rider. It's a certified organic uh, Belgian Golden Strong followed by V-Town, a West Coast IPA we crafted in honor of Ventura. Boom. And then we're going to finish off this uh, Thirsty Thursday with Groovy Lines. And it's pretty groovy, as you can see. Now, I may get back to this, but for all of those with cans of Groovy Lines, one of the challenges in your life as it stands now is to figure out what animals are on this label. Now, this label has anywhere between five and 10 animals and it's up to you to figure out 
which ones they are. If you find them, go ahead and shoot me a little message, but that's the last beer, so no cheating. Let's wait till we're drinking it. All right, so I'm just packing up my lunch bag here. I could just be that guy, put it right here. Okay, I feel claustrophobic. Uh, so we're gonna break into Cheater 5 first. Now Cheater 5 is a Belgian style Pilsner. Arguably, you could consider it more like a modern table beer or trap is single. Like most Pilsners, it's not meant to fill you up. It's something you could drink all day, especially on a hot day like today. Now you'll note this glass has a gluten reduced symbol. So one of the things that we've done here at the brewery, moving the lunchbox, is taking great pride in making sure that when we make uh, gluten reduced beers, all right, we have technical difficulties. And uh, thanks Mike for throwing me under the bus like that. So what we're going to do, let's change this phone real quick. Oh, brilliant. Kudos to the individual that told me I was sideways. Jocelyn, Lyle, cheers. All right, so let's get back to this. All right, so our glass has gluten reduced on it. First, cheers, everyone. Happy Thursday. Refreshing. All of our glasses that are for gluten reduced individuals, I'm sorry, all of our glasses that are for gluten reduced beers are list as gluten reduced. We take a lot of effort to make sure that all of our gluten reduced beers test less than 10 parts per million gluten. Um, that's the lowest detectable limit on the test itself. So if it's less than 10 parts per million, we figure it's as safe as it could possibly be. If it's over 10 parts per million, it could be 11, 15, doesn't matter. We treat it as a gluten containing beer. So we take a lot of steps to make sure that the beer is safe once packaged. And then we take an extra step to make sure that we kind of dummy proof the beer so that only one beer is going to go into a gluten reduced glass and that's a gluten reduced beer. And that's just the effort that we take to make sure the beer is safe for those who need to be in an environment where there's no gluten contamination. So for those of you that uh, <clears throat> have already tried this, you'll note that it's a really easy drinking beer. It's a Pilsner. Uh, this beer goes fantastic with creamy blue cheese. It's actually one of my favorites, like a black and blue burger. One of the great things about this beer, it's so light. There's not a whole lot of malt to this beer. So it allows the mineral profile of the beer along with the hops to really hop. So it gives you this really crisp, clean start and finish to the beer. And you get some honey notes from one of the organic grains that we use. And it kind of just adds like a little level of complexity to something that could be well, safer to drink than water back in the day and, and arguably better than water. Uh, many times people have asked me, what the heck is Cheater 5? And it's not uncommon for people to come to the brewery and order Chapter 5, and we just know it's Cheater 5. And so I'll take a moment to tell you about that because for those of you not familiar, leashless brewing is all based on surfing, surfing a longboard without a leash. And um, so Cheater 5 is a longboarding stance where someone's trying to hang 10 or hang 5 on a longboard and they just can't get their feet there. So they kind of sneak it on, they get close enough and call it a day. So Cheater 5 is our version of kind of cheating to make um, the least flavorful beer in our portfolio, which right now we have between I think right now we have about nine beers on draft and we have five different beers and cans. The COVID situation has made us adapt. And in one situation, we were shut down for three weeks between June and July, and we just canned everything, not knowing we'd open again. Um, so, Cheer 5 is available in grocery stores throughout Santa Barbara and Ventura County. It's available here for to go. And... Um, 
it is really what it is. It's a really easy drinking beer. Goes pretty good with everything. It's not uh, offensive or overly excessive on flavor profiles. The gentleman that did our artwork for this can and V-Town, all of our artists, uh, our local artists, and, and we'll talk about a few of them as well. Um, we're going to jump into the next beer, Nose Rider. So Dale Drelling did our, our Cheater 5 can label, and um, he also did our V-Town, and he's a guy that did some work for Volcom in the past, and I thought, all right, this guy's going to know and, and understand surfing, because that's kind of the premise of, of who we are as a brewery. That's where the name came from. It's also how I first, it was through surfing and scuba diving, was how I first got connected to the ocean, to nature, and that relationship, arguably my first love, was with the Pacific Ocean, and, and that drove me to having a very strong connection with environmental movement sustainability, which ultimately is why we became a certified organic brewery. Now we're going to bring out a different class. Also says glute reduced to ensure those that need that level of safety have it. And we're going to break into Nose Rider. Now this is a beautiful beer. Belgian beers are quite frankly, I think, the best beers. Lots of flavor. They're beers that you could drink with friends over good conversation. They almost all pair well with foods, and Nose Rider is no exception. Now, this beer is also made almost exclusively from a Pilsner malt, certified organic, cultivated in Northern California, floor malted in Northern California, and um, Admiral Maltings. I mean, they just knocked this one out of the park. So this beer is going to have notes of honeysuckle and pineapple, and that is literally a marriage between the malt, the yeast, and a little bit of dry hopping with a hop calypso. For those of you who remember the original Brew Nation IPA back in the 90s or so, that was the first time anyone used calypso, to my knowledge. And to this day, we still have access to it. We use it in our hazy IPA fog bank. And here we just have... A beautiful beer. There's a lot going on in this beer. Medium body, but it's a very, very big beer at 8.6% alcohol. I mean, wow. And the flavor, lots of honeysuckle, pineapple, some hints of peach. This is a fantastic beer. It, it has a lot of character because of the fact that we don't have access to Belgian candy syrup, uh, syrup or sugar. These are usually um, sugars derived from beets, and it's historically helped Belgian beers be drier and higher alcohol content. But we don't have access to that in a certified organic fashion, so you got to backdoor it. And uh, we just do an old school style. We just add more grain, which means we add more body to what would otherwise be a dry beer. Now, this is the first time since we've been open, we're, we turned three in July, and this is the first time that we've been able to have a Belgian triple alongside a Belgian Von Strong. If you get the chance, swing on by the brewery and order yourself a nose rider, get yourself a tri-fin triple, and dry them side by side. It's fantastic because the, the nose rider truly is like the champagne of beers, whereas the Belgian triple is the Chardonnay, and there's significant differences in the mouthfeel, excuse me, and the flavor profile. It's just a wonderful time to drink these two beers, have some fries. Um, recently on Monday, I got invited and was fortunate enough to sit down with Mark from the Jolly Oyster. He's a local guy selling oysters, and he has a sustainable aquaculture program in Baja cultivating his oysters. And we paired his oysters with all of our um, beers, and, and Cheater Fi was really crisp and really accentuated the umami of the oysters, but Nose Rider, oh, beautiful beer. If you're drinking this right now and you don't think it's a beautiful beer, let me know. We could definitely work on it, but I tell you, this is transitioning from a one-off, an anniversary beer for us, to quite possibly a year-round staple. It's just such a beautiful beer. Now, for those of you, excuse me, local, you might recognize the can label and the artwork. So, Andrew Rodriguez, local boy, out at Silver Strand, and um, 
He's been doing a lot of the artwork for Viz Ventura, um, the Main Street Moves and whatnot. And he also, hey Patsy, he also uh, did a mural at our place and it would be too much for me to rotate to show you to it. But Andrew is just one of those guys, a surfer, a great artist. And he just knocked this can label out in one try. And then we just did a little bit of tweaking here and there, but three tries, it was legit. Hats off to him. And I told him, all right, we need, we need a, a, a label where there's someone hanging 10 on a very critical, critical position on the wave where it's throwing really heavy and to, mis to make a mistake is just going to be the end of you. And what does he do? Arguably draws a wave somewhere in the Mentawis or Sumatra. And this guy is just perched, throwing a really graceful soul arch. It really demonstrates that both the hanging 10 and this beer are the same. It's very graceful. It's very powerful. At 8.6, this beer will definitely um, tell you it's there, at least after your first beer. And if not, try a second one, and I guarantee you, you will feel this beer. It's hard not to um, feel good after these beers. And there's a lot going on between the pineapple and the honeysuckle. Also, this beer is fantastic with creamy blue cheese. I cannot, um, I cannot express how well the light Belgian beers go with foods. Cheeses, the funkier the better. Um, vegetables, grilled chicken, fantastic. I mean, I don't even want to go on the next two beers. These, this one in particular is just so wonderful. And um, it's only about a month old. If we can make enough of it and set at least half a batch somewhere in the walk-in cooler and give it six months to age and then release it, it's going to be a beautiful thing. But it just goes to show that even right now, this beer is quite beautiful. And part of it is, the fermentation profile and Belgian beers are very unique in that um, some theorize that they evolved from red wine yeast strains from France because Belgium and France are our neighbors right so this beer in particular fermented between 85 and 94 degrees it was done in four days start to finish it was impressive uh, and the aroma in the brewery from this thing going out was fantastic um, and that's just one of the great things about Belgian beers we could take a beer and mess around with the fermentation profile and get a totally different beer. Um, so, you know, you make a good beer, you find a good artist, and when everything aligns, you have Nose Rider, which is fantastic. I, I just wanna take a moment and say thank you to everyone for being out here today. I know it's hot and there's nothing better than drinking beer when it's hot, especially inside, but it is hot. So um, let's cool down, shall we? Now, we had a little um, technical problem, so I'm gonna call in for a backup support. Can I get a gluten reduced glass, please? That's the backup support. Um, so, so far, let, you know, if you got any questions, shoot down. Oh, fantastic, another glass. It's worth noting that um, for those of you drinking these beers, at this point, you should recognize that even though these beers are gluten reduced, it doesn't taste any different. You don't need gluten for beer. And the, people have found ways to make bread rise. So you don't necessarily need gluten proteins for making bread either. So the removal of the gluten protein is consistent, it's reproducible, and it doesn't affect the mouthfeel or the flavor of the beer. So really, it's a win-win to have an organic product that also has less gluten. Let's move these guys out of the way. We're gonna be building a little fort of beer. Just shooting into my lunch box right now to bring out B-Town. And I won't judge you, I'm gonna drink some water too. Helps you clear the palate or if you got crackers or whatnot, crack into those, that the salt will also help to um, freshen up your palate. 
That said, this is designed to go from the most delicate beer, the lightest, least hoppy, and we're going all the way to the most hoppy. So our, our palate doesn't have to struggle so hard to taste flavor profiles that are hidden. V-Town is an IPA that we crafted during the Thomas Fire. And it was one of those things where, for those of you local, new, or remember, the Thomas Fire ravaged our hills. Um, three blocks up from the brewery, it was all on fire. It was, it was a pretty scary time. And we were five months old, making it even more scary. Uh, but that said, we knew that we had to transition from being strictly Belgians to doing IPAs, and we wanted to make a, a beer that really mirrored and represented Ventura, which is arguably one of the best, mellowest beach towns, great surf almost year round. We have the Channel Islands, 15 nautical miles out, and those are considered the Galapagos of the uh, North Pacific. This is just a great beach town. I couldn't be happier. And so we decided we have to make an IPA in honor of V-Town. This can art is also by Dale, who did some work for Volcom. And, um, you know, we, we do love our Belgian beers, and we recognize the need to make an IPA, which, by the way, cheers. That's a pretty tasty beer. Lots of mango and orange. Um, Bitter, but not excessively or aggressively. In fact, we like to make our IPAs very balanced. So there's some malt and the bitterness is there, but it's more about the hop flavor and hop aroma. We're here for you, Marlis. So we always made this beer and it's, there's always these little things kind of wrong with it. And during the shutdown in March, um, and for those of you not in California or, or yeah, for those of you not in California, in March, because of the coronavirus outbreak, we got shut down. And um, it was a very scary time, but it also gave me time just to think and really pull myself back as a, as a person, as a business owner, as a brewer, um, you name it, just reflecting. And I realized this beer had been crafted totally wrong, and we were going to fix that. And so we did. And uh, part of it's just looking at hop chemistry and figure out what hops really do belong in the kettle versus which ones don't. And then when you figure out which organic hops we have access to that do belong in the kettle, which ones have similar flavor profiles. And uh, we're doing one more tweak, but um, nonetheless, we, we realized, geez, we need to change this up. And all the hops that were in the original versions are now only going for dry hopping. And all of our IPAs are double dry hopped. We used to not brag about it, but we saw everyone else doing it. So we figured, well, why not? I mean, double dry hop, that's kind of, whoops, sorry, the only way we've ever known to do it. Um, but what we thought and realized was, you know what? This beer should be almost exclusively organic Eldorado. And that really helps give a lot of those mango notes. And then we throw in some organic Simcoe and um, Bravo, and that helps bring a lot more citrus. But the beautiful thing about Bravo is it has a lot of orange and vanilla notes, whereas Simcoe has a lot of grapefruit and pine. It seems to kind of go back and forth with the grapefruit and the pine, and then you get the mango. And don't kid yourself, I, this beer is fantastic. It's very easy drinking. It's not going to be a stone IPA, really aggressive or bitter up front. That's just not our style. It's not our style in our marketing. It's not, not, our, not my style in surfing to be aggressive. Just easy going, easy flowing, really enjoyable all day, just like, just like living in Ventura and going to the beach. Really just easy going. Um, and we're really proud of this beer. We've been able to get this beer in a lot of different grocery stores and, and liquor stores. It's, it's improved quite a bit. The next tweak, I think, is going to really help make the mango and um, orange explode. And we just got a tank specifically for packaging IPAs. You know, people don't realize that making organic beer isn't just expensive, by the way. Cheers. The processes that 
we use, or rather that we can't use, really affect our ability to reclaim or recover our starting volume. Um, we need to let our beers sit for at least three weeks in the fermenter, cold crash. Arguably, we're kind of like a short lager, just so all the solids settle out because we can't use post-fermentation findings that everyone else uses. There's a lot of chemicals that we don't use and can't use because we're certified organic. And I'm totally fine with that. Less is more. And the whole point of this business, actually, now that we're three beers in, the whole point of this business was to choose a product, in this case, beer, and use it to help change everyone's mindset. This happened to me, and, and I didn't even remember when it happened, but the idea is this. We make beer, make it certified organic, people come and drink at the brewery. And maybe a percentage want to drink here because we're organic, but there's others that are going to drink here because we have, excuse me, beer styles that everyone likes. And so if we get people here to drink. And then they start saying, wow, this beer is organic. And yes, it is. And then they start saying, wow, organic, it's, it's cool. And then they start buying beer and taking it home. And then they go grocery shop. And then one day they decide, hey, let's just buy some organic lettuce. Why not? And then months later, they're buying a ton of produce that's certified organic. Years later, they're opening their fridge and everything in it, milk, cheeses, you name it, it's all certified organic. They open their cupboards, it's all certified organic. When did this change in habit start? They can't remember because that process is very long, but it may have started here because who doesn't drink beer? And if you're going to drink beer, why not make it certified organic? And if that can help change our habits, then what else can it help change? The moment we start thinking about living an organic lifestyle, it changes everything. And so if we sacrifice a lot of yield, if we sacrifice uh, margin and growth, then that's fine. Um, we'll get to where we want to be, and we'll go slow and steady, just like easy living in Ventura. And when we look back, we'll see that we're 100% authentic. We always were, always will be legit, just like leashless nose riding. See how I did that? All right, cheers. That's a nice beer. Um, so I'm seeing some comments and uh, I appreciate the comments. It's not easy to be authentic when it comes at a price, but I feel it's worth it. So in the interest of time, we're gonna move on to beer number four. Now this is a pretty cool beer. For those of you that used to come to the brewery before COVID, you may remember a draft master named Paige. Wonderful girl, fantastic artist. She did her first mural of an octopus whose tentacles blew up into waves. Um, can't show you because that requires turning things around, but she is the artist of groovy lines. Now, groovy lines, I really don't know what it meant. It just popped in my head and I ran with it, as did the recipe. Um, now, this is one of the first, first double IPAs we did where we played with El Dorado, Azaka, Calypso, and Jerilu. Now, these are four distinctly different but yet similar hot profiles in, in their manner to um, adopt tropical notes. Azaka, mango, Eldorado, stone fruit, mango, Jerlu, peaches, and Calypso's tropical, pineapple, could be apples as well. Um, and we use a lot of these hops in our Belgian styles just to bring out the stone fruit esters. But this is the first time that we actually made a beer with all four together. Um, and it turns out to be a pretty groovy beer. This is the first one that we're going to be having today that is not gluten reduced. So if you're gluten intolerant or celiac, do not in any way, shape, or form drink this beer. The rest of us, party on, Wayne. 
that's an old. If someone knows what that movie is, let me know. No, for a double IPA, it's very, um, it's on the lower spectrum. It's 7.3% alcohol, 77 IBUs. It's definitely falls in the category. These days, um, brewers like to make double IPAs in the 8% and 9%. To me, that's just kind of really excessive and unnecessary. If you drink beer, you will get drunk. So why rush the process? Why not just enjoy the ride? You'll get there like an Uber. You'll get there. Just enjoy it. So cheers, everyone. Oh, Tom, you used to live in Hawaiian Village. I'm glad you got out. Jocelyn is right. That was a Wayne's World. Um, good on you. So the first thing that hits me is I should have had some water. So excuse me. Again, if you got crackers or chips, something salty, that's a good reset. I once learned when I was um, a beer steward back in the East Coast, you could also lick your wrist and the salt on your skin will help reset your palate. I'm not going to do that now because it just doesn't look cool. Nonetheless, okay, so here we have an unfiltered double IPA. And as we drink this, again, it's really smooth. Um, there is some bitterness up front. And it's slightly, I'll use resinous or sticky as it goes down the palate. Um, nice, Patsy, thank you. But it's not aggressive. It's not assertive. It's just balanced. So you can really enjoy it. Now, I talked about how Cheater 5 and Nose Rider were really good with food, cheeses. As the food chart would show you, you know, IPAs are good with spicy foods, um, pretty much anything, really. Uh, I, I'll, I'll admit, I, I love creamy blue cheese, and I can have creamy blue cheese with any of these beers. Whether you like it or not is, is a different story, but um, you should give it a go. A good Gambazola creamy blue, and by the way, if anyone watching these podcasts knows someone, who can make an organic, certified organic cream blue cheese, please push that push that bear because that's the one thing I'm looking for all the time I can't find. So the interesting story about this can art, Paige happens to also like the 60s where things were groovy. And I reached out to Paige and said, hey, we need a can label and, and she did and has done a number of our can labels um she also moved well she moved from oregon but she's local now lives here we'll stay here once you're here in ventura you don't want to leave for obvious reasons and if you haven't been to ventura then you might want to check this out if you're here you know what i'm talking about uh so she put this whole menagerie together and i could tell you right now if you haven't already found it there's a pelican, there's a dolphin, there's a seal, Cheshire cat, um, a fish, seaweed. Where is it? You have to find it. And when you find it, it's impressive. Because of COVID, we've had to adapt a lot to cans and um, just rethinking about how we're gonna survive and, and grow. <clears throat> And one of the things it's really taught us is how to find the artist whose style fits the beer. Because beer is arguably art in its liquid format. And so it's only appropriate, I think, to find the right person to make the label to complement the beer. None of these beers taste the same. They should all be different, rightly so. So too should every can art. 
and Paige has knocked it out of the park with groovy lines. She's done a great job. We'll be releasing a new can uh, Sunrise later this year. We also have a stout aged on coconut cacao. Just fine tuning a little bit, and then that will be find itself on shelves in the grocery store. <clears throat> so um, it's, it's just been great to adapt and overcome. Um, old Marine Corps motto, I, I am a former Marine. I don't talk about it much, but um, it's just one of those things you learn how to figure out a situation and, and train a team and then move on and adapt and overcome and, and keep moving forward. So, yeah, now back to this beer. <clears throat> I get papaya and lime. And it reminds me of my childhood. Of uh, so I, I I'm first second generation um, Mexican American. My mom was born in, in Jalos, Mexico, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Mexico City. My dad's family comes from Jalos. He was born here in the states. So growing up in that family like that, it's a very traditional Mexican family. Uh, you ate a lot of papayas, and we have a papaya, nice Mexican papaya, is very earthy. Lime and salt is very delicious. And this is what this beer reminds me of. The earthiness of papaya is so wonderful. It's sweet, but not overbearing. There's hints of lime. All you need is some salt, but please don't salt these beers. All very approachable beers, none of which are um, excessive or assertive, just calm and mellow, and they do their job. That's, that's how we do things. So with that, you know, again, we exist because of you, and we look forward to making more beer. We look forward to making and pushing organic beer throughout the region. Um, as far as organic breweries are concerned, there's only about 40 of us in this country. And before COVID started, we had about 8,000 plus or, uh, breweries. So that makes certified organic breweries very, very small. And the challenge we find is that we get lumped in with everyone else. That's fine. Um, these are interesting times. Just know that when you find a certified organic beer, don't judge us by price. Try our beer first. If it's good, great. Continue to support. If it's not good, reach out to that brewer and say, hey, make it better. Um, we all have this desire to make the best beer possible. Our challenge is to make the best beer possible that we can afford. And Ventura right now is really growing into a craft beer mecca, like a small San Diego. We got nine breweries just in the city alone. And we're all of different calibers and quality and um, styles. And it's really cool because you could come downtown and hit up four different breweries. Downtown, you got us, you got Anna Kappa. Brewing Company, Made West is on the pier, Topa Topa has their original um, brewery tasting room, and you have Ventura Coast Brewing Company. You could walk within a six block diameter, six block radius, and you could hit us all up. <clears throat> We've got a lot of good things going on, and um, I can speak for every brewery here in town that we're gonna keep making better beer, and making new beer, and making Ventura the place that everyone wants to be, so whether you're here or not, you should get here. Um, so with that, hats off to all of you. Yes, there, I've got a lot of beer in front of me. And yes, it will all be consumed. Don't judge. If you've got any other questions, you can hit us up. Shoot us an email at info at leashlessbrewing.com. That's info at leashlessbrewing, just the name of the uh, brewery. Also, hold on, I'm thirsty. Cheers. If you're thirsty, we do have the Thirsty Thursday four pack available. Just go either online at Leashless to Go 
or just stop by, say hi, grab a four pack and um, move on. Cool. So thanks everyone for Thirsty Thursday and let me be a part of it. It's been a, a fun time. I'm sure I may not have talked enough about these different beers. And uh, so just hit us up. We're here for you. Cheers. Have a great day. Be well, be kind, be organic. All right, you're last. Cheers, mate. Woo. Nope, type two. <laughs>